Joining us now, two Democratic members of the House Oversight Committee, Dan Goldman of New York and Jared Moskowitz of Florida. Guys, good morning. It's good to see you. So, Congressman Goldman, I'll start with you. Uh, just based on what you heard yesterday from Ryan Nobles asking one of your colleagues, Republican colleagues, about this WhatsApp message dated June of 2017, at which time Joe Biden held no uh, position of power in the government. What is your sense of what we're going to see today? Uh, 10 o'clock Eastern, you'll be in the room. What is this all about? Well, I think that exchange perfectly encapsulates this investigation. It has been from the get-go an effort by the Republicans to conflate, to use innuendo, to misrepresent, to exaggerate, and to flat-out lie to try to lump Joe Biden into some sort of wrongdoing on behalf of his son. And the evidence is not there, whether it's the timeline, whether it's the actual uh, direct evidence that you would need to have, uh, certainly to prove a case in court, uh, but also just to prove a case to, uh, to the public of the United States. And the reality is what we're going to have today is a hearing that's called the basis for the impeachment inquiry. I would think the basis for the impeachment inquiry would be the eight months of investigation that they've already had, that we don't need to have another hearing with no witness who has any direct knowledge of any of the events that we're talking about uh, to form the basis of uh, the impeachment inquiry. And it just goes to show you, Willie, you know, I obviously worked on the 2019 Ukraine impeachment of Donald Trump. Um, we had 17 fact witnesses for depositions. We had public hearings with 12 fact witnesses who all had direct knowledge and expertise about the issue that we were discussing. They can't even bring a single fact witness to their first hearing. And the reason is they don't have any fact witnesses who have any evidence of wrongdoing by Joe Biden. So, Congressman Moskowitz, let's talk about the witnesses they are bringing to the hearing today. There's Jonathan Turley, conservative legal scholar, regular on Fox News. Bruce Dubinsky, a forensic accountant, also a Fox News contributor. And Eileen O'Connor, who used to work in the George W. Bush administration, but then was a member of the Trump transition team. So what do you expect to hear from these three individuals? And do you think that they are in any way, shape or form credible witnesses? Yeah, no, my colleagues across the aisle have assembled a, a, a wonderful Fox News panel today uh, for, for our hearing because this is, this is a TV drama. It's the worst TV drama on television now. There's season two is getting picked up of the real House Republicans of oversight. Uh, and as my colleague uh, Representative Goldman said, we're going to hear the same thing we've heard for the last eight months. It's a regurgitation. There's no new facts. There's no new evidence. As you saw, the chairman of the Republican chairman of Ways and Means gets confused on who was president in 2017. That wasn't Joe Biden. It was Donald Trump. I mean, don't get me wrong. Dan and I would like to forget Donald Trump was president in 2017. But this is, this is more of the same. They're hitting the video game reset button on their hearing. They're trying to rebrand it because it hasn't worked. They haven't been able to convince the American people that Joe Biden did anything wrong because he didn't, because there's no evidence. So we're going to hear more about Hunter. We're going to see more ridiculous things coming out of Marjorie Taylor Greene about Hunter Biden, more photos. But, you know, I, I expect the Fox News panel to give the Republicans what they want to hear, which is why they're there, right? And so, look, myself and all my other colleagues, all my other Democratic colleagues are going to talk about what this hearing's really about, and that's evening the score for Donald Trump. Donald Trump has beamed these instructions down to the Republicans on the Oversight Committee. He's got 50 percent of all impeachments of any American president. He's got 100 percent of all the indictments. And so he said we were all going to be tired of winning. Well, yeah, he's definitely winning in impeachments and indictments. Uh, and so, you know, he wants Joe Biden to get in trouble so he doesn't have to run against a guy who's got a cleaner record than him. Congressman uh, Goldman, the, the contrast of this committee trying to muddy up Joe Biden with no mud. I mean, there's nothing there. He wasn't even in office uh, at the timeline they're using with their own candidate for president. I mean, most, if not all, of the Republicans on this committee has endorsed a man facing 91 felony counts, four trials, and his hometown judge just said that he had committed massive fraud. I mean, as you sit there, do you see the contrast that is so striking that these people could be supporting a man for president as this while they try to fabricate uh, and redo timelines uh, to try and muddy up the, the sitting president? 
Absolutely, Rev. When you, you look at the allegations, uh, they are things that Donald Trump did as president. And the Republicans are trying to lump Joe Biden in with Donald Trump to create some false equivalency. But when you take a look at what's going on this week, it perfectly encapsulates what Donald Trump has done to this party. He has uh, declared that he wants an impeachment of Joe Biden. So the House Republicans jump and they do what he wants. This is the same investigation that President Zelensky refused to do, but the House Republicans don't have President Zelensky's backbone. Secondly, at the same time, they are barreling us headlong into a government shutdown. Single-handedly, the House Republicans have done nothing to fund the government past sa Saturday, and that's because Donald Trump also says that he wants a shutdown. And you have Marjorie Taylor Greene linking the two. Donald Trump is a mob boss down in Mar-a-Lago directing his soldiers what to do here in the House, and they are doing exactly what he says. That's what this is all about, and they are just going to continue to fabricate evidence as long as they can, and we are it's our job on the Democratic side to point out the, the facts and the evidence that actually exist, or the lack of evidence in this case. All right, Democratic members of the House Oversight Committee, Congressman Dan Goldman and Jared Moskowitz, thank you both very much for being on this morning.